Welcome back, YouTube. Well, I finally got the adapters from Wheel Adapters USA. It took about three weeks, and I'm going to disassemble them here in front of you so you can see how they work. These are four inch by four lugs adapting to a five by four and a half inch bolt circle. The first step in taking them apart is to remove all six Allen screws. These are going to be a five sixteenths Allen wrench. You might need a screwdriver or some sort of pry bar to hold them still while you break them loose. They come with little rubber caps on the five lug studs. And then you remove the caps and you can remove the five lug nuts. After you remove all the bolts, you can take them apart and you can see how nice the adapters look. They're made out of machined aluminum. Now that I've got them broken down, it's time to test fit everything to make sure it's all going to work together. I use the five lug part with the studs to test fit it on the new wheels. And before I take the old axle apart, I wanted to give you one more shot of how it looks with the old eight inch wheels on it and how short and small they are compared to what's going to go on them. In order to install the adapter, you put the four lug bolt part up against the axle. And in my case, I have screw in lug bolts and not lug nuts. I have four of them. They're a half inch 13 thread. And so you've got to install all four of those bolts. You've got to make sure that the head of the bolts or the studs, whichever, does not stick out past that aluminum surface. If it sticks out, then your adapters are not going to fit properly. I'm doing a test fit, so I'm just snugging everything down. I'm not tightening it today. Once you have the four lug bolts in and snugged down, then you can put the six black Allen screws back in, and then the two halves of the adapter will be put together. When I install these adapters, I did notice something that's going to have to be fixed. These Adapters are not hub centric. They do not center on the hub. They are larger than the hub. These adapters are lug centric. That means if you don't get them centered on the lug nuts, you're going to have a situation where they, the hub does not run in a circle. It runs out of round and it's going to cause your wheel to bounce and feel like it's out of balance. The solution to that is to get some hub centric spacers, which I've ordered to help the new adapters center on the hub. And I will show you all of this in detail when I get the hub centric adapters in. Now that the adapters are on, it's time to install the new wheels and tires. And I wanted to measure out the wheels and tires to see whether they were actually going to fit on the trailer and whether or not I was going to have to move anything. And as you can see, they clear the springs, but outside to outside, I was concerned and I will show you a diagram here. In the diagram, you can see the old configuration in the top view and the new configuration in the bottom view. And the red lines are the leaf springs and the blue lines there are the frame rails that are existing. And with the old wheels and tires, I had over five inches of clearance from the outside of the tire to the frame rail. But with the new wheels and tires, I have one and a half inches from the outside of the tire to the frame rail. That is fine. That's not too close, but I have another concern about that frame rail and I'm gonna show you that now. My trailer came very, very close to the ground with the eight inch wheels. And it also came with the frame rail straight across. Well, in order to get the tire off, you have to jack the trailer up and the tire has to slide out from underneath the trailer. The new tires and wheels are gonna be much too big to be able to do that. So I'm gonna to have to cut and weld and change this frame rail from this outside straight frame rail to an outside curved frame rail so it'll look something like this. Now that I've measured everything, it's time to disassemble it and start cleaning it up for reassembly. We'll show you here how to take the brakes apart. Remove the cotter pin.
Then you remove the castle nut. Remove the outer bearing, and then you can slide the hub off. Then it's time to remove the brakes. You remove that lower spring. Then you have to remove this little clip at the top. It's a friction clip, and it's going to have to be pried off. When it comes off, it's going to fly. So you want to put a hand in front of it to try to catch it or locate where it lands. You need to reuse that clip. Remove that spring holding the brake shoe on. Then remove the other brake shoe. There's a spring right in the middle. It's got to slide down and then the shoe comes off. Then you're left with the electric controller. It's got wires that are interfaced with the backing plate, so you need to remove the backing plate. There are four 11 16 nuts holding on the backing plate. Once the backing plate nuts have been removed, you can tap the backing plate off. And then the brakes are removed. Now that it's all disassembled, it's time to clean it to get it ready to paint. I'm using an electric grinder with a wire brush on it to remove all the loose rust and dirt from the years of driving. I'm going to put a flip kit on it, so I wanted to show you that I beveled the edges of the part that's going to go up against the axle tube. Then I lightly grind the axle tube to get bare metal so that the weld will be able to bond the new spring perch better. And keep in mind, I'm only showing you one side of everything, but you don't need to see me do all of both sides. So whatever I do on one side, you have to do again on the other side. Apply masking tape over the finished machined part of the spindle so that no welding slag or paint overspray or anything like that will get onto that finished metal part. Before I can weld on the new spring perches, I have to make sure that the new spring perch is exactly parallel to the old spring perch so that the springs sit correctly. And that's what the C-clamp is holding there is to make sure they're both parallel to each other. And then with all the prep work done, it's time to weld on the new spring perch. And then I cleaned it up and I painted it gloss black with using Rust-Oleum paint. And this axle is ready to reassemble and put underneath the trailer. I'm going to do the cleaning and painting of the frame and all the other metal under, on the bottom underneath the trailer. Thanks for watching. I've got more to come.